In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a chatbot using the ChatGPT API and getting two chatbots to interact with each other. These chatbots have customizable initial context, so you can define a specific thing for them to follow or give them specific instructions for them to follow as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have a Visual Studio Code project. What we'll do is we'll create a new Python file and call it chatbot.py. Since we're using OpenAI, let's go ahead and import OpenAI. If this doesn't work for you, you can open up a new terminal and type pip install OpenAI. I've already done this, so obviously all of the requirements are already satisfied, but if you have not done this before, it will download open a, the OpenAI library for you. Next step, we'll create a new class. class, And let's call it chatbot. Open up some parentheses and then open that. And inside this class, we'll create an initialize function with the self variable, something called start context, which I will explain later. An API key that we'll use for OpenAI, the model that we're using, and we'll initialize this to GPT uh, 3.5 turbo. And then the temperature, which I will also explain later. We'll also initialize this at one. Inside of this initialize function, we'll want to set the model, so self.model to the model. We'll want to set the temperature, so we'll set dot temperature equals temperature. And then we'll also create a new variable called chat history. And this is going to be a new dictionary. Basically, this is going to be the, the initial context that's given to chat GPT. The context is what the model actually has to work with and what it's trying to predict text for. So setting an initial context, we can actually set the context from something called a system message. So chat GPT can take three kinds of messages. It can either take assistant messages, user messages, or system messages. User messages are from the user, assistant messages are from chat GPT, and system messages are just an, another type of message that chat GPT can take. And I'm not exactly sure how the processing works for it, but it seems to prioritize it more. So here we'll set the role as system and set the content of this message to the start context, which is passed in here in the initialize method as a variable. And then we'll also set the open API key to the passed in API API key. Next step, we're going to create another method called get response. This is a method we'll be able to use to basically pass in a message and then get the response from ChatGPT all in one method. So because of that, we'll want the self, since this is a method within the class, and we'll also want the prompt that we are going to give to ChatGPT. So we want to, first we want to append to the chat history what the user is going to say. So here we can do chat history dot append and then Within these curly brackets, we can put role is user, since this is what the user is saying to ChatGPT. And then in content, we can put what the, the prompt that we are passing into this method. Then we will make an API call. So we'll create a new variable called response, which will be what the what ChatGPT responds with. So response is equal to openai.chatcompletion.create. And here we'll make our API call. So the model, we'll set this to self.model. So this is the model that OpenAI is going to use. If you have access to GPT-4, you can go up here and change this model to GPT-4 instead of GPT-3.5 turbo. But since most people don't have access to GPT-4 at the moment, We'll leave this at GPT 3.5 Turbo. Next, we want the messages that it is using as its context to be equal to self.chathistory. And finally, the temperature equals self.temperature. Temperature is basically how creative ChatGPT is going to be. If you set the temperature to zero, it's always going to give the same output based on a certain set of input. At one, which is the maximum, is going to give different outputs depending on the input that you feed it. 
I normally set it to one just because I think it's more interesting. The next step here is to add the response to the context so that the model remembers what it told the user. So we can do this by typing uh, self.chathistory.append, and here we will append from the assistant. So we'll set the role to assistant. And then this line is kind of weird, but we'll do content is equal to f for formatted string. And then we will get the response, but not just the response, because the response has the response has the full result of the API call. So there's a lot of things that aren't actually the response of ChatGPT. So we'll go choices, so response.choices, and we'll select the first choice. Then we'll get the message from this choice. And specifically, we want the content of this message. And then we can close this string. And then finally, from this method, we want to return uh, this same thing here. We want to return this actual message. And actually, to simplify this further, because we don't want duplicate code, we can go message equals, copy this line of code to here. And then we can format message and then return message as well. And that is all for the chatbot script. So the next step now is to make another script that can interact with this chatbot and allows the user to interact with it. So we'll create a script called main.py. Inside of main.py, we'll want to import open AI once again. We also want to import our chatbot class. So from chatbot, we'll import chatbot. This, this here, the from, needs to reflect the name of the script, and chatbot needs to reflect the name of the class. Here, actually, before we move on, I forgot to put commas in the chat completion.create. So we'll go back and quickly add commas to model and chat history, and then we can save this. In main, we'll want to make a method called main. So we can do that, method main. Step one is to replace the API key with your API key. And I'll quickly show you how to get one of those. If you go to openai.com and press the login button, you can log into your account, then click API, and then go to view API keys. From here, you can click this create new secret key button, name it whatever you want. I'll call this chatbot tutorial, create secret key. Then you can copy this key and go back into your script and paste this here. And don't worry, I'll revoke this key, so don't, don't even try to use it. Now that we have our API key, we want to set the start context, which is going to be a string. For this one, we'll just call it, you are a useful AI assistant. Then we want to create an instance of our chatbot. So we'll go chatbot equals chatbot. And then we can feed in the values that we want. So here we need to feed the start context, and we'll set that to start context and the API key, and we'll set that to API key. And if you wanted to use different chatbots that have different models being used, then you can also define that here with model equals, and then GPT 3.5 turbo or GPT-4. Now that we have this chatbot, we'll create a while loop. This is going to be the main loop of this project that allows the user to actually interact with the chatbot. So we'll make this an infinite loop by going while true. So it's always going to be looping. Then we want to get the prompt from the user. So we will set make a new variable called prompt and get the input from user. Input is a method that's going to prompt the user to type something. And here we're type, pro prompting it with user. And then the user can type something and then it's going to set whatever the user types as the prompt. Then we want to get the response from ChatGPT. So we'll go response equals chatbot.getResponse, and then we'll feed the prompt in as well. And then we want to print the response. So we'll go GPT, and we'll make this a formatted string. So GPT, and then the response, and then in curly, brackets, we can type response. And actually, before we test this, there's one more thing. 
We'll quickly check if the user wants to break free from this loop, and we'll do that by checking if the prompt dot lower, which means basically lowercase this prompt, and then we'll check if it equals exit. If it does, then we'll want to break from this loop and close the application. Finally, what we want to do is if name because equals main, then we can call the main method. Then if you reveal in file explorer and double click on this main method, you can now interact with your chatbot. So we can ask it, hello, how are you? And it will respond, hello, as an AI assistant, I don't have feelings, but I am always ready to assist you with anything you need. This is basically just regular chat GPT, but in your actual console. What's cool about this is that you're able to define the initial start context. So with a little bit of prompt engineering, you can get chat GPT to act like a specific character. If I take this prompt here, I'm going to expand this into a large text, and I'll quickly format this prompt. So I, I'll put this prompt in the description so you can copy and paste it yourself. But then you can define a character. So let's say you are someone called Alex who loves the color red and listens to Green Day. If I open this up and try again, then I can ask it, hello. Who are you? Hello there. My name is Alex. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is definitely red. There's just something about it that speaks to me. It's bold, vibrant, and impossible to ignore. What is your favorite song? My favorite song would have to be Basket Case by Green Day. It's just such a classic tune that always puts me in a good mood. Then you can ask more questions to this character called Alex. Okay, so now that's cool, but what if you want two chatbots interacting with each other? That's actually not too difficult. We'll call this one chatbot1, and then call this one chatbot2, and we can copy this line here. We'll call this start context1, and then start context2. Then we'll, instead of getting a response from the player or the user, we'll go, we'll set an initial prompt, initial outside of the while loop, initial underscore prompt equals who are you? Then we can get response one equals chatbot one dot get response initial prompt, and then we'll actually set this outside of the while loop. So response one equals chatbot one dot get response, and then we'll get response two equals chatbot two dot get response. And here what we'll do is we'll pass the response one as the prompt, and then in response one we'll get response, we'll pass response two as the prompt. And then we can add the print statements so GPT-2 says response two, and GPT-1 says response one. And actually, here what we'll do, we'll set GPT-4 and GPT-3.5, and then I'll actually change these. So model equals GPT-4, and on this one, model equals GPT 3.5 turbo. So as we'll do here, you are someone called Alex who loves the color red and listens to Green Day. Here we'll make you are someone called Steve who loves the color blue and 
despises Green Day. And then if I run this script, revealing file explorer, they name. All right, so I'm gonna end it here. Now you know how to make your own chatbot script. And this is actually something that you can use as a skeleton for a bunch of other things. I've used this exact class and made a few modifications to make a custom code interpreter. I've used it to make a personal assistant. I've used it to make something that explores a text map. So it's more like a skeleton that you can use and then add your own stuff on top to make actually interesting things with it.